Amen. Good evening. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to be into your the place of worship this evening, that we may be able to apply your word today, that we may be able to be the people of God that you have called us to be. We pray, God, right now that we will humble our hearts and that we will open up our minds to be receptive to your word that our living will not be in vain, God, that our praise will be important, that our worship will be a sweet-smelling savor unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise if you love him. Give God praise for our children, young people, as they go to their class tonight. It's good to see you. We're grateful and thankful for this opportunity God has given us to delight ourselves in the study of his holy and his righteous word. Good to be looking at you, those of you who are in the building. And equally grateful for those who may be joining us virtually. Tonight, we are going to continue and put the capstone on our teaching on practically living the Christian life. We will complete lesson four. There's been four lessons in this series, and tonight's lesson is still talking about honoring the Lord with your possessions. Uh, and so we're going to get right to it tonight. I'm going to read into your hearing Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 12, which is our series text. And then I will highlight for you the portion that we're going to focus on on tonight. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 12 says, My son, forget not in my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. 
For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Our concentration tonight is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, that says again, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So as we've embarked upon this lesson last week, we started talking about and reminded ourselves of the fact that the book of Proverbs is purposed to impart to every believer, every Christian, that of wisdom. We understand that wisdom is not just the possession of information, but it's the possession of God's information that empowers us to be able to do that which God has purposed for us to do. Every believer should be on a quest um, to gain wisdom from God. As it relates to the subject matter or the, or the taboo subject oftentimes that is found in the modern church, and that is where we don't like to talk about the subject matter of possessions and the subject matter of money. And if we do talk about them, we talk about them in terms of getting them or, or, or being prosperous, as we like to talk about. But that's, that's, most times that's coupled with a hope more than it is with the understanding of truth from the word of God. Does that make sense? We hope to be prosperous. We hope to be wealthy, but we, and we do so based off of a lot of times what we learn in our natural existence, but not from, from the scripture or in our spiritual existence. And so that was such the need of, to, to respond to that is also why we have in Proverbs chapter three, verse nine, this, this mandate, this, um, this directive to honor the Lord with your possessions, just as it has been with every other aspect of this book of this chapter, um, it is this uh, mandate, this invitation and this mandate to do so because it was not being done and or it's something that one must take into consideration. That's why it's in Proverbs, it's in the wisdom literature such that we could give it some consideration. And we ought not give it what I like to reference as religious consideration, because what I mean by that, we'll peruse the scripture, we'll shout over a scripture, we'll get excited about what we think the scripture is. So is saying without having rightly divided it, without having, without having studied it, right, that we might show ourselves approved unto God. So that's why we're taking a look at that. And the proverbial writer uh, suggests to us that what we need to do in this verse is to consider how we honor the Lord and, and consider it in terms with our substance and with the first fruits of all of our increase, right? Um, and so the, the implication is honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. Now we looked at what wealth meant and we decided uh, that wealth is not, not just goods, it's not just stuff, but wealth, it, a working definition is the suitable accumulation of resources and possessions of value, uh, the, the suitable accumulation of resources and possessions of value. Uh, so anything that has value, right? I anything that we accumulate that has value. I told this morning, morning's class, uh, every time I read this definition, I think about my grandmother. My grandmother, I used to visit her uh, weekly and sometimes monthly uh, as, as frequently as I could. But when I would go to her house, I would always go in the front door. And when I went in the front door, I would have to walk through a pathway. Right, I walked through this pathway and, and, and I'd walk down this pathway and I'd go into her bedroom and I would turn left and go into this pathway. And then I would come out of that pathway and then I would go into the kitchen. And when I'd go into the kitchen, there would, there would be a pathway that allowed me to go around the table, to allow me to go by the stove and then back. And if I was coming back out the house, I'd come back down that pathway. And the reason I, I'm referencing this is because, and, and this reminds me of this, is because I, I only had a pathway to walk in. Uh, and, and that's because she had so much stuff. She had accumulated a lot of stuff and she had stuff everywhere. And maybe some of you know some people who are like that. They've got stuff everywhere. You know, that you, you're in the house and you call and say, wait a minute. And they go digging under something that's over top of something and they pull out a blanket, just what you need, right? The, the accumulation of stuff. That's what I want you to think about as we talk about um, what wealth is. It is the, the, the suitable accumulation of all things that have value to us. Uh, and, and as a result of that, I want you to, to, to think about everything you have has some value to it. Am I making sense? Uh, Y'all just heard hoarders in your head. That's all you heard. But, all right. And so, so wealth makes reference or, or substance makes reference to wealth and wealth makes reference to substance. And again, it's the accumulation of those resources and, 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 and the possessions and the, of value. So what does this text mean when it says honor the Lord? To honor the Lord 
means to treat the Lord as hefty or weighty. Treat the Lord as hefty and weighty. And that's still somewhat of symbolic terminology that simply says, make the Lord important. Make the, make, make, make the Lord significant. Are y'all tracking with me? Make the Lord significant and weighty. So then you make the Lord significant and weighty or show that the Lord is significant and weighty when you do what? When you honor him. Does that make sense? Right. And in this passage with the substance, are y'all tracking with me? So we said that these, these two considerations uh, should be what every Christian is after right? The gaining of wealth for the purpose of honoring the Lord. And I use in your handout a term employ. So it's not just having it, right? And sentimentally uh, referencing it as, oh, this is the Lord. It is employing. Let the house say employing. Now you do know what unemployment is, don't you? Am I making sense? So then when we're talking about employ, we mean that everything we have that has value that we've accumulated, if we're going to honor the Lord with it in accordance with this text, that means all of it has to have give glory to God. Not some of it. Not, not All of it has to be purposed to give glory to God. Am I making sense? Now, we looked at Matthew 6 and 21. I want you to go there tonight. We'll start there again. If I seem like I'm reteaching the lesson I am, because leftovers are better the second time. Right? Y'all with me? Matthew 6. Um, y'all put y'all's mics up, but we can we can move quicker. And um if, if y'all if y'all work with me. He's got one. All right. Matthew 6 and verse 21. Would you read that for me, please? These words are in red in your Bible, which indicates that Jesus is speaking. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, so what this passage is suggesting is that, that where your treasure is, where your resources, where, where your value is, where your wealth is, where your worth is, where it is, where it is applied, that's where your heart is, right? When I teach faith and finances to individuals, I tell them, the first thing I want you to do is put your Bible down and pick up your checkbook. And I want you to read to me what, where, where you spend your money. Because where you spend your money is where your heart is. Y'all are mighty quiet. Now, take that and compare your checkbook to your tithing record. Y'all didn't say amen. Because where you, your treasure is, there your heart is. And don't blame me for saying that Jesus said it. Are you, am I making sense? Jesus said it, and, and, and because Jesus said it, that makes it so, right? And so, and so what he's saying to us is this, that we have to spend some time considering how we, how, how our honor system reflects our reverence to God. And when it comes to the mediums of money and mammon, which we'll talk about in a minute, you, you need to know that your, your checkbook can tell you a lot about your honor system. Ooh we, y'all ain't saying amen. I guess my amen crew decided to be somewhere else tonight. Are y'all with me? All right. So, so, so now what, what I want you to also note is that God does not prohibit you from utilizing money, right? And, 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 and having nice things, but you have to do that in context with glorifying God. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those who what dwell therein am I, am I making sense so you got to honor the lord and and that's what our disposition should be as we live out our practical uh christianity live out practically our christianity you cannot spend your resources or or squander your value watch this y'all like those who don't belong to the lord Y'all are mighty quiet. Not if you value God, right? Not if you see God as weighty or as a priority or as heavy. Y'all ain't going to, y'all, y'all going to, I'm okay. This is going to be a good night. All right. So now, now the text says, honor the Lord, right? With what? Your substance. Let the house say substance. And then the next word is what? Uh, huh? 
I'm in Proverbs 3 and 9 again. Oh, I left Matthew because I already told y'all where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. Y'all got that? Now, no, no, now listen to my question. The question is, is honor the Lord, what? With our substance. What's the next word? And, what does and mean? And means in addition to. Are you with me? It's important that you catch that and. Don't run through that and because it's there for a reason. It's there to help you to understand that your honoring with your substance is different from your what? First fruit. Let the house say amen. Even if, or ouch, whichever applies. All right. So first fruit honoring is what it calls for. So the command of the scripture is to honor the Lord with the first fruit of all your harvest. The word is increase. The word increase makes reference to a harvest. Are you with me? The first fruit is the best part. And it's how we worship the Lord, not just with hymns and singing and praising, but also with the giving of the first fruit and the best of our material income. Notice I didn't say your financial income. Are you with me? Because, because when I say material, it includes financial. Because money is material. Y'all are mighty quiet. That, that's important to know why. Because material, all material, including money, right, has a shelf life. It will deteriorate. You understand what I mean? The dollar bills you hold, the, the ones you bank, the coins you keep, all of that has, a, it's going to deteriorate. Now, now watch this. What you think about it is more important than what it is. That's why the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It does not say that money is evil. God has no problem with you having money. God has a problem with you allowing money to change you. Y'all are mighty quiet. God has no problem with you having stuff. God has a problem when you let stuff change you. I, I, wish, I, had, I, I wish I had an amen corner, right? That's significant because what God is really interested in, not the stuff you have, it's his anyway. He's interested more in you. And how you allow that medium of stuff to create distance between you and him. Are y'all tracking with me? Are y'all understanding? So, 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 so then Proverbs then gives to us wisdom of God in the form of a command, right? An invitation that says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of some of your increase, all thine increase. All right, now, now, now we're going to put some meat on this. Y'all with me? All right, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 24. Why is this command there? Right, it's there because it shows to us an expression of true worship and devotion. When we, when we are willing to honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all of our increase, it reflects to us that we are devoted and, and committed in worship unto God. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. Uh, go ahead and read that for me, and I'll talk about what it is. However, the king said to Arana, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. For I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Thus the Lord was moved by prayer for the land and the plague was held back from the Israel. All right, so we've got, watch this. We've got David who is living with the people under a plague, but he wants the threshing floor because he recognizes the connectivity to God as a result of the threshing floor. So he goes to another king, Arana. He goes to this particular king, and the king recognizes David as a king. I want you to catch this. King, a king is talking to a king, right? This is king talk. 
This isn't a king talking to a subject. It's not a subject talking to, 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 a, to a higher higher posture. This is a king talking to a king. In other words, neither one of them are broke. This, this, is, this is king business. As a result of this, that David is trying to get something and the king recognizes David as a king and he honors him and says, no, you don't have, you're David. You don't have to pay anything. David said, have you lost your mind? Watch this. David said, no, no, I'm not going to offer unto the Lord nothing that costs me nothing. Did you catch it? David said, whatever the cost, I'm willing to offer. Now, what did he offer? The Bible says that there were two offerings. What were they, Mr. Henderson? Burnt offering and what? Peace offering, right? Those two offerings have meanings. I don't have time to go into, into them now, but in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament culture of providing offerings, they offered certain things as it relates to their relationship to God for certain situations, right? If there's a sin offering, right? There's an offering of atonement. There's this burnt offering, and then there's a peace offering. But what I want you to get for this class is simply this. He is offering unto them, that is the act of worship, bringing an offering. Because he is de so devoted to God, God is so heavy and weighted in his life that he is saying, I am not going to shortchange God. So I'm going to do what? I'm going to pay. Let the house say pay. So it's going to cost you something is what he's saying because it's costly. Why am I sharing this with you? Because when you start talking about honoring the Lord with thy substance and the first fruit of all thine increase, the first thing that natural people do is first of all, they claim ownership of what they have. And then when there's a demand placed on them for more of it than they want to give, then they do what? They tip God or they, or they offer to God that which is less, which only reflects that God is not as weighty to them as sometimes they want to make you think. Y'all are mighty quiet. For where your treasure is, there your heart is is also am I, am I making sense all right so that's what i want you to see it, it it shows your devotion and your your commitment and it is costly what does it serve to accomplish go to psalm chapter 24 <clears throat> psalm 24 verse 1 Somebody get a mic and help. help, help right Earth now. is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood and, and has not sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's good enough. Go back and read verse one one more time. The earth is the Lord's and all of it and all it contains. Right. The world and those who dwell in it. So when we are willing to offer honor the Lord with our, with our substance and our first fruit, it also is reflective of the fact that we understand, right, that, it, that we don't own anything. Every week I pray during our offertory period of time, right? But we understand, right? We understand, right, that all things belong to you. And that which we have has been entrusted unto us under the banner of stewardship. I pray that prayer based on this scripture. Am I making sense? And if it's stewardship, it's not ownership. It's management of, right? Not possession of. Are, are y'all tracking with me? Y'all ain't saying amen. Y'all looking at me real strange. All right, where's Craig when you need him? All right. All right. Am I making sense? Now, now watch this. Now watch this. So, so once we resolve that, right, that's what we are telling God when we are willing to adhere to Proverbs 3. We're telling God that we understand that what we possess does not belong to us. And we're going to honor you 
with it. All right. Now, I want you to take notes. I'm going to give you these three things and uh, they're not in your handout. Um, Gio, let me know if, if there are any questions. Um, they're not in your handout, but I want to give them to you. Right. If you get these three things, hold on to them. If you miss anything else I teach tonight, um, you'll be OK. All right. The first thing I want you to write down is this. Tithing is dutiful giving. Tithing is dutiful giving. You do it because it is the duty of the believer. God has called for it, and we, watch this, and we don't pay it. We bring it. There's a difference between paying tithes and bringing tithes. Am I making sense? Y'all understand the difference? You pay bills. You pay what you owe, right? But, at, but since it's out of a relationship with God and it's out of devotion to God, you're bringing it because God asked for it. Now, I want to tell you this. You don't even have to struggle with doing mathematics when it comes to the tithe. It is what it is. Am I making sense? It's the 10. Y'all got it? Second thing I want you to note is that the offering is a seeding gift. It is a seeding gift. Does that make sense? That means when you sow it, you sow it with expectation. How many of you have ever sown a seed? Let me see your hand. Good. How many of you have ever been able to look at the seed itself and determine just how much of a product it will yield? You can't do it. It's not possible. That's why anytime you sow a seed or an offering, it is with an expectation. Now, I, I even said to the morning class, and I'll say it to you, um, I, I have a practice where I name my seed. Y'all know I'm strange. Y'all know I'm crazy. Y'all know I'm out there. But I name my seed, right? Because I've read my Bible. My Bible says a seed reproduces after its own kind. So, so, so when I have an expectation of God in a particular area, I will sow a seed into fertile ground and name that seed based off of my expectation. Well, pastor, that's crazy. Or it, why? Because you don't even, what the seed got to do with it? That's faith. I believe that God will honor my sowing of this seed into fertile ground and respond 30, 60, or 100 fold based off of the increase he determines. Are y'all tracking with me? Now, that, 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 ain't, nothing, ain't nothing spooky about that. Because you don't have a problem doing it when it comes to squash and carrots and, and tomatoes. You understand what I'm saying? You will sow that seed in the ground naturally. And you not only will you sow it, you'll protect it. Are you understanding? You'll build a fence around where you threw the seed. And you'll keep checking it day after day to ensure that it, listen, that it grows. Watch this. You don't get the fruit immediately. You, you, look, you watch the increments and look, don't, don't, don't see no bud. Ooh, look, it's growing. You start telling people, my, you know, my tomatoes are coming up. Y'all are mighty quiet. Y'all understand what I'm teaching? It's, a, it's an expectation, right, of God. Not of the seed. You know why? Because the seed does what the seed does, but you have the expectation of God producing the increase in your life. That's why you ought to be willing to name your seed. All right, third thing I want you to get. You got tithing is a dutiful, dutiful giving based in devotion. You've got offering or seeding, which is done in expectation of a incremental, listen to me, increase. Let the house say incremental. Watch this. Y'all with me? Y'all in answer. Y'all with me? This is yes. This is no. This is I don't know. All right. Y'all with me? I need to know you're tracking so I won't leave you. Now watch this. Watch this. When I say incremental, the Bible says, right, that when you sow seed, right, you'll see the blade, the ear, and then the full ear in the corn. 
30, 60, and 100 fold is another reference to it. Watch this. Notice that it is 30. It's not 10, 20. Are you with me? It is 30 because God gives increase. And when God does something, God doesn't do it by digits. He does it by exponential. So it's 30. Y'all tracking with me? Then the Bible says it's 60. How much increase is 30 from 60? Huh? It's double or 100%. Are you with me? What about 60 to 90? 30, 60 to 100. Because the text says 30, 60, and 100 fold. Are you with me? Yeah, now watch this. You with me? It is exponential growth, right? Not segmented growth. It's not sow the seed in the ground, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Neither is it sow the seed in the ground, watch this, 10, 20, 30. It's sow the seed in the ground, 30, 60, 100 fold. Are y'all understanding me? Okay, that's important. That's important because it's exponential growth. Now, third thing you need to know is this. You got tithing, you have offering, and then you have first fruit. Let me say first fruit. Now, we just read in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, to do what? Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit. So first fruit giving is also honorable giving to God. Are y'all tracking with me? Was that a question, Gio, or are you just stretching? Okay. Are y'all with me? is honorable giving to God. Here's the problem. The church generally, and I'm not talking about our church, but church, the body of Christ generally, right, only talks about the first two givings. Are y'all with me? Y'all not going to say amen, are you? I need at least one. I don't need an amen corner. I just need an amen person. How about that? <laughs> All right? How many of you have been taught about first fruit in the church. You have it. You have heard about tithes and offerings, though. The reason you've heard about tithes and offerings is because we have reduced the weightiness of giving as it relates to the church to being about the church, not about God. Are y'all are with me? Now, we do that. Don't, don't leave me. We do that because we have, we have not looked deeper at scripture as it relates to giving to God. Now go to the infamous scripture of giving, Malachi chapter 3. Go there. Is there a second mic out there? You got it? Good. Malachi chapter 3. All right. Are y'all with me? Let me know when you're there. All right. Somebody read Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring ye, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I would not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Okay, that's wonderful. Now I want you to start again. I don't want you to read it again. And stop when I tell you to stop. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Stop. Bring the tithes where? Okay, let's say it again. Bring the tithes where? Continue to read. That there may be meat. In my Stop. house. That there may be meat where? In my house. Let, 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 let the house say my house. My house. Y'all got it? So the tithe is brought into the storehouse that there may be meat where? In my house. Now who's talking, Govan? The next. 
saith the, the Lord. Lord. So the Lord's house is to be what? Full based off of the tithe being brought into the storehouse. Y'all got that? Okay. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Y'all stay there. You, you stay right there. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Y'all, you stay with me. Y'all with me? Go. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. Keep going. So your barns will be Stop. filled with plenty. Stop. Honor the Lord with thy substance, right? And with the first fruit of all thine increase. Next verse. So your barns will be filled with plenty. So whose barns? Your barns. Right? So your barn. Now, wait a minute. That's different from Malachi's reading. Malachi's tithe is to fill whose house? Well, what's to fill yours? Say it like you read the text. Don't be afraid. First fruit. Am I, am, you, you understand the difference? No, no, watch this. No, watch, you, you got to understand. See, we've been taught that if we tithe, right, watch this, then, then our house ought to be blessed. And we act, watch this, not tithing, trying to fill our house. Are you understanding? But the problem is not, watch this. <laughs> the tithe is only purpose to fill his house. So if you're trying to tithe to fill your house, it's not going to happen. To fill your house, you need to move beyond the tithe and beyond the offering into honoring the Lord with the tithe, the offering, nah, the first fruit. Y'all in y'all with me? See, there's a there's another form of giving that the church doesn't operate in. And as a result, we continually coming to God and saying, God, we're not getting the blessing of overflow, but we're tithing. We want it, we're hoping for it, we're praying for it but it's not coming because God will not step outside of the system. He has established for us to receive it. That's why many believers live in the land of just enough, not the land of more than enough. Are y'all tracking with me? Because we are not putting into play the system that God, or the kingdom practice that God has established called first fruit. And the only reason we haven't is because, don't miss me, y'all, we have prioritized the religion over the relationship. Now, we honor the, the, the Bible. He's, God says, bring the tithe. That's an act of what? Devotion. He says, if you need something, sow the seed. Let me give you some more Bible. Right? You got to manage the seed. You bring the tithe, you manage the seed. How do I manage it? Well, seed is not to be eaten. Seed is to be sown. And the Bible says, say the Bible says, he that sowed sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. That's not a, that's not a magic trick. You put two seeds in the ground, you're going to get whatever that harvest is. You put 50 in the ground, you're going to get more. That's just how God has set the system up. Are y'all understanding? All right. All right. I hope y'all are tracking with me. So we're sowing, right? And how we sow determines the increase or the, or the what? What's the byproduct of sowing? Right. When, say it again. Harvest. Now, what do you do with the harvest? Now, watch this. Okay. Y'all with me? Now, watch this. Honor the Lord. We're in, we're in the same verse. 
honor the Lord with thy what? Substance. Your wealth. That's what you have. Are you with me? You tithe out of what you have. You sow seed in the kingdom of God with an expectation of God based off of what you have. But you don't sow and what, what follows and what? First fruit. You can't first fruit based off of what you have because what you have is not fruit. You got to have a harvest in order to first fruit. Are you understand? Ah, oh, God. All right. Y'all pulling on me, so I'm going to give it to you. Right? So watch this. You don't sow a seed, you don't get a harvest. But isn't my tithe a seed? No. Your tithe is an act of your devotion. Seed you determine, sparingly or bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you reap a what? Harvest from that. Now you can get in the and posture. And first fruit. Are y'all tracking? Okay, good, good. All right. Now, so um, when you, when, when we're moving on, when you give of the first fruit, you are saying, right, to God, you are honoring God for giving you harvest, for producing in your life. Because if you take the harvest and you bank the harvest, Am I making sense? You have not said, shown gratitude for God for giving harvest. I hope, hope, hope y'all give. Let me, let me put some more Bible in this, y'all. Y'all looking real distinguished right now. Why first fruit? Why first fruit? Well, I don't know if it's the best. It's, it's the first. You're saying, God, before I do anything else with the increase you gave me, I'm going to honor you. That's what the, that's what the, 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 the first fruit concept is all about, that you're going to not just increase. Y'all know how we do. We didn't have, right? Now we got. Now we got more than enough. Uh, look, we, we, we blessed now. And then we take the blessing and forget the blessing. Are you understand? All right, go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Somebody there? I'm there if, you, if you're not. Exodus 20 verses 1, 2, and 3. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You should have no other gods before me. That's good. So in other words, watch this. If God has brought you out, brought you over, brought you into place of increase, right? You cannot, watch this. If you take the first of your fruit and take it to the mall, you know what? Should I ain't never been able to go to this restaurant. Now that I got it like that, I'm going to this restaurant. This is why I'm going, I'm going to give me a stage. You understand what I'm teaching you? Now watch this. I don't want you to miss this because we're in Proverbs chapter 3 and Proverbs chapter 3 is wisdom to the believer to help the believer learn to live their Christianity out practically. And we've talked about trusting in the Lord. Are, are you with me? But what tends to happen when we start talking about substance and, and, and mammon and money that are, that are in our possession, we, we, tend to, we tend to tense up, right? But I also want you to take note of the, of the subsequent verses in Proverbs 3, verses 10, 11, and 12, speak to an attitude, right, about being corrected. Are you with me? He said, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Can you imagine? Okay, let me ask you a question. Suppose some of us, some of us experience this anyway. Suppose you've been good to somebody to the regard that now they're, they're, they're in a better position than they were before. 
and they take the betterment, run off and act like you ain't never done nothing for them. That you had no, you, you, you had no part in their development. Kids do this sometimes to parents. Y'all understand what I'm telling you? How do you feel? Well, how do you think God feels? When God has brought you out of the land of not enough into the land of just enough and beyond that to the land of more than enough and you take the more than enough and ignore God? He's only weighty to you when you don't have or weighty to you when you just making it. But when things are well, y'all are mighty quiet. When things are better or best, we then turn on God and say, no, and don't let God send somebody to tell you to, to place a demand on what, what he's entrusted to you under the banner of stewardship. You will quickly take ownership of the plenty and say, this is mine. And when you do so, watch this, according to the words of Jesus, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Translation, Exodus chapter 20, you have made another God before him. Gucci didn't bless you. Y'all understand what I'm telling you? All right. So now, go to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. When we give of the first fruit, it's an acknowledgement that our life is dependent upon the Lord, not upon our material possessions. And that we consciously choose to depend upon him rather than upon our money and possessions. Mark 12, verses 43 and 44. Whoever has it, go ahead and read. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury for all they did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living so this is of course the the the, the, the woman who gives the mic right and as a result of that what he's referencing to the disciples is simply this he's doing a comparison and a contrast he said there are those who have given right and they've given into the treasury, but they've given out of their what? Abundance. You with me? But this woman, she gives out of her, watch this, life. Did you catch it? One is based in the natural value of things. The other is based in the value of God in her life. Jesus teaches, he says, you can't serve two masters. You have to love one and hate the other. He says, you can't serve God and mammon. Mammon is material wealth, which includes money. The love of money is the what? root of all evil. Are you understand what I'm saying with you? Now, I don't want you to miss what I've already shared with you. I don't want to go back to it. Because in Malachi, tithes and offerings are to be in the storehouse. Does it make sense? Offerings in the storehouse are seeds sown in the kingdom based off of an expectation that one has, watch this, of the kingdom or of God? Of God. Let me speak to an issue that, that plagues us in the church. Well, I give to the church, so I should be able to get from the church. Your giving to the church, church is not a bank. The church is a place where we live out our practical Christianity. 
and we live in accordance with principles. The only way we can have that concept is if we reduce the church to being something that does not bear the weight of God. Are y'all listening to me? And then we now have practices that are more in line with institutionalism, not with inspiration. I'm teaching better than y'all. Am I making sense? And so, and so what we're learning then, remember, honor who? The Lord. This ain't about nobody else. It ain't about the preacher. It ain't about the deacons. It ain't about, you got, you got people, and I ain't, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. If it lands in your lap, say, hey, amen, out, you just sit real still, look straight ahead, nobody knows it's, it's yours. But there are people who say stuff like, I'm going to hold my tithes. From who? Who are you holding them from? And based on what? All you're doing, watch this. If it's a tithe, all you're doing is keeping windows of heaven closed. If it's a seed offering, all you're doing is not getting an increase in your life. And you're certainly not going to do a first fruit if you, if you ain't going to bring a tithe. So there's not going to be any barns. Y'all are mighty quiet. Field and vats overflowing. That's not going to happen. And most people are in that posture because what they do is they hope for the overflow. But they don't work for the overflow. Y'all are mighty quiet. Am I, am I making sense tonight? Y'all with me? All right. And so, and so that, that's... Um, Go, go to 1 Samuel, and we're going to finish this up. And, uh, and, and, and because I'm going to finish with about a few minutes left, I'll respond to any practical questions, because typically when I teach this, there are some. If there isn't, we're going to go home as early as we go. <laughs> Y'all with me? 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel declares, I did indeed say that your house and the house of your father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. Watch this. Watch this. Because of God's eternal covenant with his children. Are you with me? He said, I'm going to be with you. Is that what, is that what you read? Now watch this. He says, but for those who honor me, what's he going to do? Honor them. Did you hear what I said? The God who provides is the God who will honor. But he will honor those who what? Honor him. Do you understand? That's why when he says, so shall that barns be full, what? And thy presses overflow. That's God's honoring. Consider. If I were preaching, I'd run you out of here tonight. Consider, right? When he talks about barns being full, right? Consider all that God provides to all that is needed. Y'all missed it. That nobody has anything to do with it. Consider the lilies of the field. You see, all over the scripture is that I, God is doing stuff and, and people, things are benefiting from what God does. Watch this, and they don't, have, they don't have an investment in the blessing at all. He built it in. Am I making sense? Consider the flow of the river. He has a system that continually ensures that, y'all not listen to me. This is the God who says, if you honor me with your substance and your first fruit, I will honor you with barns that are filled. Y'all missed it. Not barns that are being filled. Barns that are filled and, 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 and overflow of provision. 
All right. I'm done. Honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruit of all thine increase. Increase. Um, this week, I think we started this last week, right? Um, I'm grateful and thankful for those individuals who heard God. At least three individuals have begun to attempt to practice. And I said three. Three, two have put into practice the presentation of first fruit. One attempted to, and I stopped them, right? I stopped them because I wanted them to hear the rest of the, of the message, the rest of the lesson, but, but they were already inspired to do it. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Am I making sense? Um, um, I'll tell you about one of them. Um, one of them was my son, right? And he walked in, he said, Dad, this is my my choice first fruit. And I prayed the blessing of the Lord upon him in accordance with what the priest is supposed to do. And, um, and so I got to thinking about it. And I said, boy, ain't got no job. So what? And then, and then it hit me. He sold his first fruit based off of gifts from graduation. And I began to rejoice because I know he got it. Now he, he's heard the lesson years. He, they've been taught it in the house and at church. So, But I was like, wow. What I'm trying to tell you is this ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with your money. It's got to do with your relationship with God and the magnitude of your faith that you apply to your relationship to God. My job is to present it to you. Right? Your job is to do with whatever God tells you to do. But you, but you heard Proverbs, and it's crystal clear. I don't benefit from you doing it. You do. This is between you and God. It's a practice that my wife and I have been in, engaged in for probably all of our, our, our time together, pretty much. Right? Tithes, offerings, and first fruit. And if by chance you've missed it, every sense. I've been serving God as your pastor during the offertory period. I pray these three forms of giving. Here's what I say. God, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to give back to you of that which you so richly blessed us with. We understand that all things belong to you and that which we have has been entrusted to us under the banner of stewardship. Therefore, we give in accordance with your word. We bring the time to show our devotion to you that we believe you to be the God who what? Opens windows of heaven, pours us our blessings that there shall not be room enough to receive. And we sow our seed offering, believing you to be the Lord who gives increase in our lives, 30, 60, and 100, 100 fold. And we bring up our first fruits to declare that we understand that you're in fact the Lord over all harvest. Now, God, for those who have it not to give, help them to, uh, in, to understand they're in the greatest posture of all. Your word declares that when they give their lives to you, you will give seed for sowing and bread for consumption. We give graciously, watch this, and we understand it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's the prayer. Right? Not Lord bless those that have and those that have not. Those. Y'all understand what I'm teaching you? All right. Are there any questions, comments, reflections? Yes. Okay. Um, I understand you bring your tithes and offering. Um, those are presented to the church if we're trying to, those of us who are trying to get into this financial thing um, brought into the church. Where do we take our first fruits? Do those come to you? Yes, to okay. the priest. To the priest. Okay, right. so that doesn't go into the tray or anything like that. If no. we're trying to do it, 
and we're actually doing first fruits, we come to you with that. Yeah, let me teach. I'll te I'll teach to you what was taught to me and what's practiced, what we practice and what has been practiced in 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 in, in ministry where I'm in. So I represent the priest, meaning not not the position, but the relationship between God. I'm the medium that says to God, this individual is practicing this principle based off of what I have taught. Now, let me give you the back end. What do I do with it? I don't go to the mall. Now, my responsibility is to seek the Lord to determine what the Lord wants done with the resources. There have been times when, when, when let me tell you, money been in an envelope for almost seven months, right? My responsibility is that of the priest your responsibility is that of the person that's doing it. When I give first fruits, where I give first fruits, it ain't my responsibility. I ain't even, I, I really don't care. You understand what I'm saying? Because those who start to care are not based in God, they're based in what? Here. Now, now there's, now watch this. There is a form of first fruits that you already know. And it doesn't, it, watch this, and it doesn't, it's not based in relationship. It's called taxes. They don't ask you. <laughs> they take it without any consideration of you at all. That's why I'm teaching you. It's about relationship. And I'm going to say this too. If you have, if, 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 if the spirit is working in your heart and you're considering, make sure you are comfortable. Right, this ain't no heaven. Or, this ain't no miss heaven or get to heaven thing. It is practically living Christian life. If you never do it, that's fine. That, 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 you're not gonna miss heaven, and you, it, the Lord ain't turn. No, you, 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 the, the the repercussion. Now that you've learned, though, there's an accountability. Maybe that's why some people stayed away from class tonight. <laughs> you, you, you know, because now that you know, there's an accountability. But again, it's all based in honor, right? Honor the Lord, right? Honor the Lord. And then, of course, it's comments reflection. None? Let's pray. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, of the increase. No, ma'am. So let me explain that. The first fruit of course, it is the harvest. Let me, let me tell you how it, what it would look like practically. Let me give you an example. And, and if I don't answer your question, make sure I give you clarity. So um, suppose, right, I'm working and I get paid $100, right? A tenth of that is what? Ten. So I, I'm bringing my tithe. If I choose to sow an offering, that's not a mandate. That's if I'm looking for an increase in an area of my life, I test that seed and I give it right? That's my choice, whatever that is, right? What remains, I, I do my living on, I do whatever I'm going to do. Then I come in and y'all say, you know what? You're such a wonderful pastor. Here, here go 50 more dollars, right? Now I'm, I'm, I'm at 150, right? But the first 50 is a what? Increase, right? Now of that 50, here's why I may, I may be, I think I'm asking your question, answering your question. Of that 50, I get to choose Right? What I believe to be is the what? Best part to offer to the Lord. That's it. I bring that to the priest. I say, This is my first fruit. The priest should be praying the blessing of Proverbs 3 9 over your life in agreements with it and then seeking the Lord for what to do with it. Now, what happens the following pay period? What do I get paid? No, I get 150. What happens there? I tithe. It's a one time, it's harvest. That's it. I get another harvest, I give another first fruit. It's that simple. Now, I, I don't, I know he wants the mic, but I don't want to give you the mic because let me just, how long have you been, been exercising practicing first fruit, Devin? I feel like I'm doing an infomercial. About 20, let me see, I can, 2013, probably about 
15, 16, so we're 15, 16, a couple of years after I, I learned it. Okay, so you, you learned it in, say, what year, 2015? Yeah, but Right, and then you put it into practice? When? No, I put it into practice 15. Okay, so talk about what, what has happened. In, you, you tell your story. I don't want to probe you. <laughs> just, just very quickly, because I, I can mean, talk about what has happened in our lives. Yeah, I mean, just simply, I mean, just simply put, um, you know, I've I've seen the the difference of the like is the blessing in my life when I have done it and when I haven't done it. Um, uh, when I have done it, is man, where this come from? Like, I don't like extra, and it's not always just money. It, for me, it's been it's also been like opportunities where it's like man, I didn't think I would get this or that's getting... In, I'm sorry to interject. That's important to hear, right? Because remember, all of this increase is always determined by God. One waters, another plants. God gives the increase. This is, this is, a, this is available to us. And, if, and, and I know most people are still wrestling with tithing. Right, right. But but for those who 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 got that second nature, and you want to continue in the in the trajectory of the blessedness of God, I didn't I didn't tell you anything that didn't come out of the scriptures. You saw that for yourself, right? In context, not out of context. So again, it's to the magnitude that we're willing to grow with God. A person is willing to grow with God, uh, and so get get the level of comfort you need, right? Or if you don't get it, you don't get it. Right. Okay. It's amazing. It, 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 it's always amazing to me how I know, I know I'm over my time. It's always amazing to me though when we get to this por portion of the series, um, you get that deep contemplation. We didn't have that when we said trust the Lord. Commit that way. You know, we, we we didn't have that because what's attached to that is our sentimental value to money, and we and 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 we've got our. We got our intelligence concerning money and mammon and value from the world, not from the kingdom of God. So understand that. All right. Um, any other questions, comments, huh? Any virtually? No? All right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. In this context, are we just talking about like uh, money or as far as giving? Because um, as he stated, sometimes the, the fruit comes in other ways as well. The um, things that we get, the different opportunities that we get. So are we to trust those things as the first fruit to God as well? Wonderful question. Wonderful question. So that takes us back to honor the Lord with thy substance. Right? And remember, we identify substance as wealth. Right? So, and I said this this morning, you just brought it back to my memory. Um, there were times I, I shared this experience. Um, I needed a I needed a vehicle. I needed a, a dependable vehicle one time, and because one I had was not dependable, but I had a a schedule out ahead of me that I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get to all these places with this vehicle, right? So I went to get a car. My wife and I went, and I, and I got turned out, and I was like. And I, was, I was disheartened. I was leaving that place, that dealership. I was leaving that place on my way home, and I passed another smaller dealership. Right, you, you remember this? A, a, a smaller dealership. And out of the corner of my eye, I caught the tail end of, of a car that was just like the one I just tried to get. And they were closed. And I didn't say anything. I said, Spirit just whispered to me, go back. I went back the next morning, early, when they opened. I drove off with that car. Now, now watch this. I wasn't asking the Lord for a particular car. I, I wanted a particular car. Did you hear me? But watch this. My ask was, Lord, you know what you've got before me. You know I, I can't do it with this. So watch this. You, you got to make a way. So although I was declined over here, I knew the Lord had to make a way. It, okay, give her the mic. Okay. Go because prior to that, you sold a vehicle, okay. 
into someone's life that we had. There was there was a young lady young who lady, had several yeah. ch- several kids, right? And um, she had several kids. She was driving a vehicle that wasn't gonna make it. We had purchased a, a van, right? It was our second vehicle. Are you with me? We gave the vehicle to her, right? After that, the vehicle we had was it de- wasn't dependable. You understand what I'm saying? Again. The substance, the wealth. This is New Testament church, y'all. The Bible says, and they had all things in common. Because it doesn't belong to you. It's purpose for God to do with what God has purposed it to do. But if we hold it and claim it as ours, we rob God. Y'all got me on overtime now. Come on. They're going to make me go to finance. I need that $50 I was talking about the other night. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. Y- y'all with me? Pray over it. Listen, because I can tell the spirit is working in your hearts uh, on the seed of this word. Continue to nurture it. Go back through the handouts. Read, this, read the passages themselves. Work through it. God has blessed you with the information um, because he wants to bless you with the information. So um, you seek that out yourself. If there are any questions that come up, any other things y'all know, I'm available. You let me know. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm thankful that God has blessed us with it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what we feel in our hearts. We thank you for what you're working in our hearts. Get your glory, Lord, and help us to understand who you purposed us to be, how you purposed us to live practically. And we thank you, Father, for loving us enough to even invite us into the wealth of the knowledge of your word concerning first fruits and honoring you with our possessions. Now, God, we ask that you would continue to nurture the seed of this word and that we through continued prayer and further study, dear Lord, will nurture the word that it shall be made manifest in our living. Not, dear God, that we might have the barns and the overflow, but that you might see, God, we honor you. And there is nothing that we have, nothing in our possession that we see as more value, valuable than our relationship with you. Continue to bless this church, God. Continue to let your presence permeate all of our existence. Lord, and we thank you, Father, for setting a standard against the enemy and for calling us, Lord, to see your glory in ways we haven't seen before. Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, let us never escape your presence is our prayer. In Christ Jesus' name and all God's people would say, amen.